Tweeners. I'm Artemis. And I'm Alice. And we're here in Greece at Saloniki. As part of our second main activity, Rethinking School, of our e-tweening project, E-Nature Go Eco, we are out here in nature, a park, among school buildings, to interview our guest, Mr. Vangelis Dinos, an English teacher in secondary education. First of all, welcome and thanks for being here with us today. Uh, what is your relationship with nature? And what do you think student relationship with it uh, should be? Well, that's a good question. Thank you for having me here. That's an honor and a privilege. Um, I must say that we don't really think of nature as an environment that we should respect, but we most think of it as something that we need to utilize and make it, take advantage of. So I would say that uh, nature is our relaxation, is, is, is a place where we can just take some time there, calm down, rest, uh, have some fun with our friends. But it's also a place with which we respect because we are part of nature. And unfortunately in our Western culture, we don't really think about it too much. Um, in Indian culture, for example, it's very common to see poetry that is addressed to nature. People talking to nature. We don't do that so much because we think nature as something completely outside from us. But we are part of nature and we should have a relation with respect to it. Uh, completely agree with you. Uh, what do you think can be done for a school to be more environmentally friendly and more sustainable? Yeah, that's a very good question. Well, in theory, a lot of things can be done. Um, I'll tell you some theoretical stuff and then a practical observation from my part. So, in theory, you can install solar panels uh, on the roof of the school. And you can have the school being sustainable completely dependent on it on the sun we have a lot of sun here in greece so we can do that at least here in our country also we can have uh, there's like a water recycling system uh, it's, it is used in some parts of the world like singapore uh, there is a, a, a big tank that collects the rainwater and then you take this rainwater and you filter it in some way and it's used both as flash water for the toilets and also as drinkable water for the water faucets at school. So we can also do that. There are like two systems. Um, additionally, we can also have um, recycling bins everywhere in the school. So no matter where you are in the yard or in, in a classroom, if you eat something and you want to throw away the package, don't do it in the bin, do it in a recycling bin. However, we can talk about this in theory, but uh, as a secondary school teacher myself, and as students, you can observe that we go through schoolyards and we see rubbish, we see litter. So I would say, before we do anything, let's just talk to ourselves, be honest about ourselves, and just clean up our mess after we eat something. Make sure that we take, we dispose of it properly, I would say. Can you think of an effective way to make school greener? Yeah. Well, I would say, well, what I said earlier, you could, you could try some, some methods, some improvements in the facilities of the building. Um, if by greener you mean also active in fighting against environmental pollution, you can also organize campaigns or you can organize uh, events in the school that uh, would involve the local community and would basically promulgate this idea of we need to help the environment. Uh, apart from that, there's not much we can do. I mean, sometimes I, I think of people who are trying to help the environment, that's good, but there is that much that we could do as individuals. And in order to effect a greater change in society, people who have authority need to act more uh, actively on it. Um, what do you think school can do to gain the student's interest? Environmental issues? Yeah. It's a good question. Well, well, I would say just present them the facts. Um, there is a lot of fear mongering going on with environment. Okay, so there are a lot of people that say, keep, keep on saying, oh, in 20 years we're all gonna die because of climate change, or in 30 years um, a lot of cities will be destroyed and other facts like that if you read like environmental reports on such issues 
there are some extremists that support the view that there might be a relocation of people because of their their current inhabitant place so they live near a coastal area this coastal area is in danger uh, and they might have to relocate but they might have to relocate okay so some extremists say that things are terrible some moderates think that okay the situation is fine um, I would say teachers need to tackle all these issues but in a way that focus on statistics and facts um, and not in a boring cliche like way like what can we do to protect the pandas all right that's that's you're already bored with what I said okay we can think of a million ways to say you know how to protect protect like a, a spider or a panda whatever but let's focus on what is the important issue here first how can school effective help students develop a sustainable thinking uh, that's great well with what you are doing right now I would say and also by not being spoon-fed by anyone but by doing research yourselves okay you must know Greta Thunberg uh, a young woman uh, environmentalist who is very uh, vociferous in her talks and her arguments against environmental pollution all right but a lot of times if you take such people you are inspired or even you are taken aback by their force and by their the, the, the magnitude of their character but in some cases their arguments just don't make sense mm. what i would say is avoid try to ignore people and situations where you focus only on cliche solutions okay so we need to save the polar bears we need to stop using petrol we all need to get a bike all right how practical is your solution Think practical get to understand what's going on around the environmental issues that you're trying to solve all right I'll give you an example you have let's say to to limit or to eliminate every carbon emission that we make as people okay how can you do that in a way that does not destroy the economy if you just say in one night okay let's let's destroy all cars let's use green cars okay how can you do that will somebody give me like a free car will somebody give me money to buy a car which is runs on electricity so you see that we may be very eager to propose theories and solutions but no one is really interested in putting their finger there and trying to solve the problem practically what I would say is do your research be skeptical of what you hear sometimes the reality of environmental pollution is not that grim it's not so catastrophic as some people portray it. It's things are not that grim as they appear. Do, do more risk, read more. Don't just listen to somebody, even to me, frankly, even to me. Don't just read something on the internet, watch a video, just watch a documentary. Do actual research on this topic. Thank you. Um, do you uh, think teachers in school should try to make their lessons more interactive to the students? In what sense, interactive? In a environmental like, type of sense. For example, uh, go out in the school garden or in the school yard and do mm -hmm. some activities there. For yeah, yeah. In fact, I've done this in the past. And I like doing it at this time of the year. Um, yeah, I would say it's a great, great idea. It's been used by our ancient Greek philosopher, Aristotle. He called it the peripatetic school, like from Greek peripato, it's like walking school. He took his um, disciples out and they were just walking and talking about philosophy. I think that nature can teach us great things just by sitting down and observing it in many ways. And that would be very useful for a variety of lessons, I would say. Uh, biology, geography, chemistry, but even other lessons like literature, English, you can discuss um, people who were fascinated, poets that were fascinated by nature. You can just ask students to sit down and think of a, of a reasonable way. Why would someone be uh, surprised and shocked by this beauty around them? Would they find it beautiful? I, I don't think there is any person in the world who's going to sit at a, you know, in front of a beautiful landscape or a beautiful view by the sea or by the mountain and they wouldn't feel relaxed and calm. I mean, th I think there's no single person in the world. 
And that tells us something, tells us that nature is, is there um, and we are part of it and it helps us to relax. And relaxation is a part of the lesson. So I would say uh, it, should be, it should be incorporated, but it should be done in a way that is not just, oh, let's sit at the garden and just talk. Because in that way, nothing would really change. The, the, the learning procedure should find a way to include nature as an integral part of the lesson, not, not just a space to sit there. Do you think a school with better aesthetic quality should seem more appealing to the students? Well, what do you think? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say yes, of course. I mean, think about, think about the school and the classroom that you are having lessons in, all right? Usually you have like rows of desks, chairs behind the desk, and there is like a teacher at the center, at the front of the class, sitting, standing, whatever it is. Uh, there and you are in a square formation, right? I imagine a class where you could go in. There's like a round table. Uh, the seats are um, are leather. They're made of leather. They're bright colors. The walls are painted with uh, uh, art that you have made as as students. And there are bright windows that allow the light to come in. Wouldn't you feel better about it? So we, we sometimes think of uh, aesthetic beauty as an accessory, as something not really important, as a secondary aspect of our lives and of our schools. And frankly speaking, the schools that have been built in the past were designed in that way. Let's just do our job here. Okay, let's, let's just perform and function. What do we want? We want a square box to fit in a lot of people. That's what we want. Yeah, okay. But after years of trying this, we have come to realize that beauty is part of the play. If you make the classroom, if you make the school beautiful, the lesson will become more beautiful. The schools, the idea of the school in students' minds will become more beautiful and more accepted. Thank you very much for being here with us. You have completely inspired us with your answers. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you thank so you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. All the best with your work.